Now, as a general rule, I'm not a huge fan of people losing their jobs. Personally, I've been there before. Not a fun place to be. Now, I could say when it comes to the sports world sometimes, you know, when it comes to that point in time, I'm all for a coach being shown the door, but that could, in theory, create opportunity for somebody else, but it also is about you've got to that point in time where it is a necessary thing. And when you look at it, when people lose their jobs, sometimes it sucks and sometimes it's unfair and sometimes, unfortunately, that is just life. That is the business world. Sometimes you have to trim the fat. Sometimes you have to consolidate. You have to reorganize. You have to rethink things in an ever-changing world, an ever-changing business environment. So sometimes it is, unfortunately, a necessary evil. So a few times a year, we usually see the WWE gets on a future endeavor kick and they let a few people go. And, you know, while it sucks for these, these people, these men and women that get released, it is the nature of the beast. And where one is shown the door, it could potentially create an opportunity for somebody else. And sometimes some of these people that get released never really got a fair shake. Uh, some of them were given opportunities and they blew it or they made enemies backstage or whatever the case might be. A variety of different reasons. And sometimes it's just a matter of the WWE is running a little too heavy and they need to trim the fat a little bit. So, you know, a few weeks ago when you saw Emma and Summer Rae and Darren Young be released by the WWE, to me, to me anyways, it's not an earth shattering thing. Emma pissed off people backstage and really hadn't done a whole lot with the company. For whatever reason you want to say, the bottom line is she hadn't. Summer Rae was mostly a nothing, and Darren Young was, unfortunately for him, mostly a nothing. So you had three people that were just really, in all intents and purposes, taking up space and costing the company a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to do so. So from a business standpoint, you think about it of either A, you could pay somebody else that much money to be better and do more for you, or you could pay somebody less to do the same thing, or just not have those positions be filled on the back end. Again, it makes business sense. But what doesn't make business sense to me is the news we got today about James Ellsworth being released by the WWE. And now granted, it's not exactly like I'm some raging James Ellsworth mark or saying believe in no chin or buying the shirt or anything like that. But I can't see where it was necessary or justifiable to release him from a business standpoint. From a product standpoint, it makes absolutely no sense. And first off, F the WWE for sitting there and having them get beat up by a bunch of women on the way out, knowing weeks ahead of time, surely, that they were going to cut them. So you made the dude look as bad as you possibly freaking could before you sent him packing. Way to go, WWE. Great job. What a bunch of dicks. But when I look at James Ellsworth, and obviously not much to look at, and... You say, this is a guy, he's nothing more than a job, or he's nothing more than an enhancement talent. But the real trick is, the guy got over initially last summer as an enhancement talent. The guy took one opportunity, one shot, one spot, and made the most out of it and got almost a year and a half run out of it and was successful doing so. This guy got over enough as an enhancement talent wrestling somebody the likes of a Braun Strowman to where eventually the fans got behind him, it kind of created a bit of a quasi-movement, and it kind of forced the WWE's hand to where they ultimately gave the guy a contract. He goes on to become one of the top merch sellers in the company for a period of time as a babyface. You're working him in an angle involving freaking AJ Styles. That doesn't seem to be the type of guy that you would be in a great big hurry to release. That seems to be the guy that you've invested something in. Furthermore, you have gotten more than enough out of in terms of the return on your investment. And then when James Ellsworth is a babyface and he's over as a babyface and he's actually moving some merch as a babyface, 
if for no other reason than the WWE just trying to F with somebody like they always do, they got the F out of the company name, but they didn't get the Fing out of the company in terms of how they screw over people. You take a James Ellsworth who's organically, naturally over as a babyface, is getting a babyface reaction, is moving merch as a babyface, and you inexplicably dumb dick turn him heel. Because you had no real justification or reason for doing so, you just did it because it seems like you wanted to fuck with him, so that way people would be tired of him and you could move the hell on from him. But then a funny thing happened along the way. He gets aligned with Carmella, and now James Ellsworth gets over a second time, this time as a heel, and can get some actual legit heel heat, and that heat actually transfers to Carmella. It doesn't just come about him or revolve around him. In a company where so many people can't get over, no matter how much you push them, no matter how much opportunity you give them, or they can't get over the right way and the way that they should and by design, James Ellsworth was able to first get over as a babyface to a level where it forced the WWE's hand to give him a contract. Then he became a top merch mover. As hilarious as that sounds, it is what it is. And from the WWE standpoint, one of your biggest needle movers in terms of business is merch sales. Why would you want to get rid of somebody that moved merch and then got over again as a heel? I'm sorry, but this just reeks of one of these things like the WWE never had any vision or plan for doing anything with the guy. And now they got to the point where they decided Vince or somebody else in the company high enough, but probably Vince, that they were bored with him, that they didn't want to utilize him anymore. And screw business or anything else or logic or common sense, you're just going to show him the door. And this is exactly the type of irrational, nonsensical, dipshit business decision that I would expect out of the WWE today. When you look at that roster, there is plenty of fat to be trimmed. But I promise you, James Ellsworth is nowhere near the top of that list. Like, I look at it this way. I like Apollo Crews. He's done nothing for all intents and purposes. Hasn't got over from a business standpoint, putting any personal biases aside, James Ellsworth brings more to the table than Apollo Crews does. Apollo Crews should be shown the door, not James Ellsworth. I look at the Ascension. How the hell do both of these guys have guaranteed contracts with WWE? What the hell have they ever done? Whether that is the fault or the company or not, which it is, of course, it does not matter. At the end of the day, they are two guys that you're not really doing crap with. They are wasting space and wasting money. You literally could have cut both members of the Ascension and saved more money than you would have by cutting James Ellsworth. Furthermore, you will make more money with a James Ellsworth than you will the Ascension. That just is the wrestling business that we are in today. How the hell do Primo and Epico both have jobs still? But freaking James Ellsworth does not. And I'm sorry if we want to go down the Carlos Colon path and such... Puerto Rican wrestling territory is nothing compared to what it once was. It is inconsequential. It is insignificant. Who gives a shit? James Ellsworth, from a business standpoint, much better to have. Dana Brooke is a nothing. You look at the cruiserweight division. I mean, TJ Perkins, Noam Dar, Arya Davari, Drew Gulak, just to name a few of these ham and eggers, these jobbers and jabronis. How the hell do they all still have contracts and jobs with the WWE, but freaking James Ellsworth doesn't? Like, you look at James Ellsworth, and, and not trying to make this a puff piece, but I'm just saying, from a business standpoint, the guy made you money as a babyface, then you forced him heel when you shouldn't have to fuck with him, and then he made that work easy to work with, did whatever you asked him, totally comfortable with making a complete ass of himself, you know, basically the type of guy that you always should have a spot for in your company. Who, you hadn't even went down really the tag team route with him, you didn't really go down the, oh, I don't know, cruiserweight freaking division route with him. The point I'm getting at here is, even just based off of the current iteration of James Ellsworth's character, and the amount of stuff you still had left to do with him, you still had at least another two or three run out of an in 
out of an enhancement jobber. Why would you cut that off? Just despite yourself. It makes absolutely no sense. And I'm sorry, in the grand scheme of things, James Ellsworth to the current WWE is a thousand times more valuable than that overrated, overhyped, lazy piece of crap Dolph Ziggler, and that's the truth, and I defy you to tell me that he isn't. James Ellsworth is inherently more valuable than that rip-off artist Dolph Ziggler, and that's just the way it is. And frankly, James Ellsworth is a lot more valuable than many of the people on Raw and SmackDown, male and female alike, that have been pushed and featured on WWE television via Raw or SmackDown Live. But for some reason, the dude with no chin got released. And it just makes you wonder again, why the hell would anybody want to go to this company at this point? You know, granted, you could say the WWE still offers you the most opportunity to make the most money. And regardless of what anybody says, that is fundamentally true. But you could go there, be given a one-off, make something out of it, really connect with the crowd, get yourself over, force the company's hand. But because the company doesn't want you to, they don't want you to be over. They don't want you to be one of those types of guys. They will screw with you, stick the screws to you every step of the way, and then eventually release you no matter whether it makes business sense or not. I'm sorry, this is the type of dumb dick business decision that if I'm a shareholder of WWE, I know it's just one guy, and not a guy that was ever going to main event or be a massive star, but it's the type of business decision I look at it and say, what the hell are you doing? What the hell are you thinking? How does this make any business sense whatsoever? Because on the surface, it does not. You're keeping people that are a money drain. And you just cut somebody that made you money for no real particular rhyme or reason. This sends no message to the locker room. All it does is create an environment that people wonder, why the hell am I still here? And again, you can make money in wrestling still to this day. Why would somebody want to go to WWE and be at the whim of the WWE and all that they will do to eventually screw you up, which is what they do with 95% of the people on the roster in that company? Why wouldn't you just work a variety of different companies and independent shows all throughout the country and all throughout the world? You might not make the same amount of money, but you have better control over who you are and what you do. You can better dictate when you work, when you don't, how you're utilized, how you're not, when you're utilized, when you're not, and not have to deal with this bull. Like, I mean, if I'm sitting there in that WWE locker room right now, unless there is something really under the radar that we're not aware of, I'm sitting there and I'm scratching my head and I'm saying, why the fuck did we get rid of this guy? The Colognes have a job with WWE and James Ellsworth does not. T.J. Perkins, who couldn't get himself over the frickin' cow jumping over the moon or any damn thing else. When they say character enabled or whatever, it's certainly not talking about T.J. Perkins, that boring piece of doo-doo. How in the hell can you look at T.J. Perkins and look at James Ellsworth and look at what they've done during their time in WWE and determine that T.J. Perkins is more valuable than James Ellsworth? And you haven't even utilized James Ellsworth again in every single fashion. This is two or three years down the road. And you had used him in the tag team division. You had used him as a manager for somebody else, male or female. You had used him in the cruiserweight division, which would have seemed to be a natural fit. Then I get it. You feel like you've kind of run the gamut, and now you're getting to the point where you're not going to get much of a return. But you still had return to get. I don't freaking get it. I don't get this company, and I don't get how anybody can look at this company and this particular decision and think in any way, shape, or form, this is good for business. Put aside whether or not you like the concept or premise of James Ellsworth and his character, whether or not you thought it was hokey or stupid, or you thought it was an indication of just how lame the business has gotten and how lame the product has gotten and all of this. I'm putting that aside to sit there and say, this was stupid. And Vince and everybody else deserves to be questioned because ultimately, they can't give you a good business justification. And if you can't make a good business justification for the decision, then maybe, just perhaps, Vince, you old senile piece of crap, maybe you shouldn't make the decision at all. Period.